very familiar with the 5,000 metre race. And Jen, this is going to be a great race. This is going to be so exciting, Ross. There's so many competitors in this race that have a chance of being in that top top five. Um, yeah, fighting for the medals into the top three positions. So we have some big names in this. Um, we have Hamish Lovemore from South Africa. Um, his coaches leave, and Hank McGregor will be watching on today. And pushing him on from South Africa. You know, in South Africa, they grow up learning so many mm -hmm. tactics from a very young age. Um, we've got Torben Rask from Denmark, multiple world and European championship medalist at Marathon. He's also European under 23 champion from last year, K1000 meters and 500 meters. And this year, he won one of the senior canoe sprint world cups Sprint, out sprinting Pimenta um, in the K1 5000 meters earlier in the year in Rachis, Czech Republic. Beside him, Ronan Foley, he had a great marathon European Championships this year. He placed fourth in the short course and also fourth. And he's the, Irish. And he's Irish, always a, always a good thing. And he placed fourth in the under 23 long course of the marathon European Championships. He loves 5K racing, he loves the tactics involved, um, and he's going to be another strong competitor in this field. Charlie Smith in lane 32, another very well-established marathon paddler. He won a medal in the under-23 marathon European Championships this summer. So there's some really strong names in this lineup, and it's going to be one hell of a race. And you can always guarantee in a field of 35, there'll be one or two Smokies who just come from the clouds that nobody's been uh, predicting and nobody expected to be up there, and they will be there at some stage during the race just causing a little bit of mayhem but look at this 35 athletes spread across the course here they will be going hammer and tong in just a moment and well i can p predict a little bit of carnage probably the question is for the good athletes how do you stay out of that trouble because you do not want to have your race run and won before you even get to the first boy but uh, we're getting ready now folks we're going to see a pretty exciting start i think yeah, this is a very nerve-wracking part of the race here. You're sitting, you're just waiting and waiting for the Well, races, start can, be, to go. races can be lost here, can't they, at the start? Yeah, for sure. And, you know, your heart is beating fast and you're just waiting for that gun to go. And they're off. Look at the splash as they all head out there. A lot of speed on here. People do not want to be left behind early. You do not want to be at the back of a 35-strong field trying to get around through wash and around boys you need to be up near the front you can see some pretty determined paddlers there jen who are you spotting yeah look at hamish lovemore leading it out you've got thorben rask also making his way over to hamish's side wash we haven't even mentioned the hungarian of course so we'd expect them to be uh, up there uh giving a good shake at some stage because uh, the hungarians well they love their distance paddling so you can expect they will be in oh man and that's what we were talking about Already the paddler from Finland did not even get to the first boy. Unfortunately for him, trouble early on. So we're down to 34. Yeah, and the Czech paddler is pulling out in front. They're going to form one big group now. They'll, there's, you've got the Portuguese over in the far side. That's actually Pimenta's K2 partner from the K2000 meters at senior level. Hamish is making a move. He wants to defend and get up into that front. There he is, yes. That is uh, Duarte, the, uh, the, the Portuguese K2 partner of Fernando Pimenta. He's up there now. Looks like he's actually going to try and challenge for the lead. A little bit of, little bit of a problem there amongst the first group. Yeah, you've got Torben Rask on the left side wash and Hamish Lovemore on the right side wash of the leader from Portugal. So, so, yeah. And you've got Charlie Smith making a move. You've got Ronan Foley on Charlie Smith's wash. He just needs to get up on that wash and stay out of any problems. Well, a uh, couple of the favourites, Jen, as you uh, forecast, are up there early. They've managed to get through all the trouble. There's no problems for them, and so they've managed to get themselves into a reasonable position. Oh, what's going on here? What is happening here? The Chinese is the Chinese and the looks like the Lithuanian Lithuanian having a bit of a argy bargy. One of them was going the wrong way and it looked like they were not exchanging addresses. 
Uh, I think they may have been. I think there's no friendship loss. No, anyway. no, not very pleasant. Okay, a nice front group is formed here. Charlie Smith on the left of the front wash. Big group, Amish Lidmore, you got Ronan Foley, you got Sweden. It's a big group. The Czech popping back through the field now. He was up there early uh, in the early group, but he's just sliding back through the field now. But that is a big first group as we head down the straight for the first time. Yeah, and you know this first turn at the 7.50 mark, it's it's important to try and ride up high on the front washes because you avoid any of the collisions at the back of the group. You can see Torben Rask very relaxed there in the V wash. You've got great South African support running along the side. Running alongside. And, <laughs> and you know what? I'll never forget the atmosphere in 2017 in it Peter Marsburg. It was amazing. It oh, was such a great Unbelievable. Event. People dancing, singing, cheering. You know, distance racing in South Africa is it's it's one of their biggest things in canoeing in kayaking and um, they've got such great marathon races and look at hamish lovemore going up he's he's inspired by oh, he, he went and then he stopped decided to relax back down again he needs to defend his wash now from the italian on his outside though going around up to this bend torben is in the best seat of the house there at the moment he's reserving about 25 percent energy on that v wash what a fantastic jostle that's been at the start. And uh, it is the Portuguese out in front. We're used to that this year. Normally, though, it's Fernando Pimenta. But we have a different Portuguese paddler out in front. He's obviously, I'm sure that he would have had a good long chat to Pimenta before this weekend to get his thoughts on the best way to, to do this race. And uh, he's, he's ripped a page straight from the Pimenta copybook here. Go to the front. Don't let anyone go past you. Yeah, for sure. He's got someone... <laughs> Very good to learn from, and as you can see, the speed of the front group has just slowed down. He's like, time for someone else to take goes, up the lead. Hey, there goes the South African charging around the outside now. And, uh, big group at the front, then a really big group there, uh, about 30 metres behind, being led by the Czech. Oh, and there's oh, somebody's gone the on American. the wrong side there, the American, well and truly on the wrong side of the boy there. He backs up and gets himself back around because you have to go around that boy yeah i think that's one of the guys from the k2 500 meter bronze medal this weekend and there at the back of the field you can see the chinese athlete who was involved in that little stoush earlier on with the lithuanian so he's now at the back of the field but at the front of the field i think it's the south african at the moment jen who's uh, got himself into the prime spot uh, looking nice and strong. Yeah. And Hamish Lovemore. And we got Ronan Foley going up, trying to take the lead now and get himself in a good position. Charlie Smith just playing around in the back of those washes, trying to find wherever is most comfortable for him. And here we have, I think we also have in there, I think I just spotted uh, an athlete from Argentina in that group as well. So. The Argentinians, of course, have got a few good marathon paddlers. Yes, they do. And there he is. Yes, that's the Argentinian there, number 21. That is uh, Batusta Etria on the outside there. Just uh, got himself into a nice posse. So as you can see, the German and the Swedish are closing down on this league group. So, so there we have what happened. Look at this. There's uh, all sorts of shenanigans going on there. And look at this. Uh, the Chinese saying, what? I'm going the wrong way. Help me out, I'm facing the wrong way, and yeah, they're not too happy with each other. Wow. Oh, no. I, no they I'm, did well to stay up in those conditions as well. Yeah, I don't know, though, that that's going to be viewed favorably by the judges, to be honest. It's the sort of thing that you can't have in this sort of competition, but that can be sorted out later Ooh, on, because look at this. Big group, front group. And there's a few more paddlers there's trying to catch up. a couple more up. joining. Wow, so we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, eight people. Eight paddlers in that group at the moment. Is oh, that... Charlie and Smith oh. and the Portuguese are... So the Portuguese paddler who was leading now, he's been shuffled back through the pack and got himself into some trouble there with Charlie Smith. So that's cleared the way now for the uh, lead pack, the lead couple of paddlers. Maybe they want to make a bit of a move. They're coming down now in front of us here at the commentary box. And it looks like it is the Irishman. 
Yes, he's doing a great job leading out here, but he needs to also... I don't know why they're going so far they're right. They're going very wide. Yeah, that's... They're making the course longer for themselves. So what's the tactics there? I wonder if they misread the course or... Because at the moment, they are a long way from where they need to be. There's Hamish Lovemore on screen now, just trying to... Stay and Forbin Rusk there. Now he's looking like he's uh, decided that now is the time to make a move. And I think these these two or three paddlers, Jenna, are, are going to try and make a move in a moment yeah. just to thin this group out a bit because it's too big for them at the moment and very uncomfortable. So the top three paddlers here have actually been training together the past few weeks. Um, Thorben Rask, Hamish Lovemore and Ronan Foley have been training together in Silkeborg Kayak Club over the last few weeks. So they would know each other very well. Um, they they would love to break away i think into a group of three it would be the perfect situation for them as they would be able to pull away from the rest of the competitors it looks though like the portuguese is back up there and the argentinian i haven't come into view yet from our commentary position but there you go there is your front it's actually a group of five six with the argentinian and then hanging on the back it looks like it's the German is it hanging on the back there. Yeah, it's, it's the German. Uh, Elias Kurth, who we haven't called at all, but he is in that group as well. But it's Hamish Lovemore out front at the moment. There is Ronan Foley, Thorben Rusk sitting on just behind Lovemore. And then there's a couple of paddlers just behind. The Portuguese is there. Yeah, Charlie Smith and the V-Wash reserving a lot of energy there. So uh, still a big group, still at least six or seven in this group as we head down on the first of the short laps lots can go wrong still jenny sure can and you know we've got the first of the short laps and there's four short laps all together so there's a nice group away but you need to try and stay in a good position in this front group um charlie's in the best seat of the house there at the moment and um, He's reserving about 25% energy, and you know, if he can reserve that energy now, it means he'll have more of a sprint at the end. So They've made another little bit of a break here. Yep, they're trying to thin oh, it this. It slows down again. Yep, as Hamish sits back, he wants someone else to take yep. the lead, to take over, so clears out of the way, and it looks like it's now Thorben Rusk who's taken the lead. Yeah, Thorben's taking the lead, Hamish is in the V, and Charlie Smith on Thorben's right, and as we look at the screen on the left. So there are your lead three, Charlie Smith and the three training partners, as Jenny was telling us. He is the, uh, the infiltrator. He's the guy who's come in and jumped in the group and wants to spoil the party at the moment. And it's really now, as they come down in front of us in the commentary position, it's sort of, it looks like it's a group of four and then a little bit of a gap now opening up to the German and the uh, the Portuguese and the Argentinian. The Argentinian going out wide though, Jenny, just trying to make sure, or trying to uh, catch Surf up again. that wave up. Yep. But Torben is really putting down a marker here. He's trying to break the group down. The German though has uh, managed to bridge the gap though and will just hop on the tail of Hamish Lovemore there. So he is still in that group of five. And then a little bit of a gap now. So a little bit of a gap now to the Portuguese and the Argentinian who are struggling to stay in touch. The German also looks like any moment now that he could drop off as well. He's worked hard to get in touch, but I don't know that he is enough to, to stay in touch with these four very strong paddlers. Yeah, you know, those four at the front, they're very accomplished distance racers. And the fact that they can all speak to each other and know each other you know, Charlie would have raced these guys many times and would will know them well, and they'll all be talking about trying to change the washes. And But, you know, when there's a group of four or five, it's going to come down to the line um, for those medals if it stays together over these next few laps. So they're on their second lap of the four short laps. And now it's Ronan Foley's turn again out in uh, the front position. And look at Charlie Smith back on that V-Wash, just yep. saving energy. And now the German's still there. He's hanging on at the moment. So a group of five at the moment, which is OK at the moment, but another lap or so, and that'll start to feel a little bit uncomfortable for some of these paddlers to have five. Five into three does not go. No, it doesn't. And 
you know, Charlie's been very smart there. Um, he doesn't need to be on the front washes at the moment. Like I said, he's, it's only the second lap of the four short laps. So the more energy he reserves now, the more he'll have at the finish. So Ronan is leading it out with Hamish Lovemore on his left and Thorben Rask on his right with Charlie Smith in the V and the German just hanging on at the back of the wash there in fifth position at the moment. So. They've really cleared out now this five. It is a race in five. I can't see anyone from the chasing group uh, making up that ground. So, Yeah, and you know, when you're in this group of five, you have to be really smart about thinking, OK, there's five of us. And like you said, we're all going for three medals. So you really don't want to be, oh, Hamish. Oh, oh, my goodness. What was he doing? Where was he looking? Oh my he goodness. He has totally misread that. And look at this now. Thorben yeah. Rask has seen an opportunity. He's decided to put the foot down. He's going to make it hard now for Hamish Lovemore. That is a crucial error. What was he thinking? The boy is huge. Surely he must have seen it. But now he has put himself in a really difficult position. Have a look at this. Jenny, talk us through oh, it. What's... I'm sure Lee and Hank, if they're watching this, are screaming. <laughs> at the TV at the moment. Thorben looks like he's shouted out to him. He's saying, you're on the wrong side, mate. Yeah. Thorben's seen him. He's seen that he's gone and the wrong way. And then Ronan and Charlie just get around that boy on the right side of it and the German. So uh, now we can see a bit of cat and mouse going on now. Thorben Rusk has put his foot down. He's decided to try and scatter this field because he knows Hamish Lovemore is in big trouble and yeah. has a lot of ground to make up. And look what he's done, Jen. It's now yeah, been cut back to Ronan three. Ronan Foley's in a great position now. He just needs to hang on to that wash. And Charlie Smith also. There's three of them away. They, If they can work together now, they will have secured a medal each, not knowing what colour they'll get at this moment in time. There's Hamish Lovemore. He is desperately... I mean, he's done oh. well. He's actually done well. He's done very well, but he is going to be... Burning. Burning inside. And uh, there's, uh, I think that's the Lithuanian paddler who's already had trouble with the Chinese paddler. Now he's had a swim, so it hasn't been a great day for him in the 5,000. But let's have a look now. They are on the opposite side of the course. That is your lead three, and then Hamish Lovemore behind with a, in a group of two, trying, I think with the German trying to keep yeah, in touch he's doing curve. some work to pull back up he really really is will, will he have anything left so they're on the third lap now of the four short laps and i'm sure ronan is thinking just put a head down try and keep away from the third and fourth position try and keep away from the fourth and fifth positions try and secure himself a medal at this stage Thorben just looking over his shoulder, I think he would be very, very annoyed to see that Hamish Lovemore is coming up now. And in fact, oh there my he goodness. is. There he is. He's managed to catch oh. up and put himself back. And now I think we're going to see where the... That is uh, some comeback. Yeah. Really, really is. So there's... Oops, there we go. He's had a bad... This time it was the Australian who sent him in, the, uh, the Lithuanian. So, yeah, that is now a group of five again. Four and a half, possibly the German... He's struggling, but Thorben Rusk there, maybe he's a little bit annoyed with himself. He had an opportunity to really take Hamish Lovemore out of the equation, but Lovemore has managed to somehow get himself back up there and to be in this challenging group of four. Yeah. Now looking out the window, it's four people, four athletes there, and the German, you can just see there, there we are, the picture, the German's just dropping back a little bit. Hamish Lovemore, that is a... Now, this is where he got into trouble the last lap. Might be a good idea to stay on this side of the boy this time. He's not going to fall for that trick again. He <laughs> but sure he, looked, gee, he looks spent, though, Jen, doesn't he? He sure does. That it will have cost him a lot of energy getting back to that group. And as you can see, Ronan Foley is sitting in the half V, trying to not let Hamish get up and have a V wash to get his energy back. He's Ronan's been very smart doing that now. You sort of feel if, if he wanted to now, Rusk, he could really blow Lovemore out of the water here if he wanted to put the foot wow, down. Wow, look at Hamish. He has another gear. He's really trying to come up around onto that side wash. This has been an amazing comeback. He's getting Charlie to get up. This, is, uh, some... this, has got, this has got Hank McGregor written all over it, hasn't it? This is a oh McGregor-like performance at the moment from Hamish. And look, Rask is going oh, look again. Go. Rask is going and Lovemore is not going to let him out of his sights. And now they just settle down again. Rask is thinking, OK, surely you haven't got anything left. I'm going to try and take you out of the equation, but no way. 
Lovemore is not going anywhere. Just knocks Ronan Foley out of the way. Yeah. And Ronan's going to get up into that V if he does 10 hard strokes. To so there we go. We're back down to four. Normal service has been resumed. We must be coming up now. What are we at? Uh, 17 and a half minutes. They've got one more lap. And now Hamish is doing to Ronan what Ronan did to him earlier in that lap. He's sitting in that half V, not letting him up into that V wash. He's thinking, I want this medal. So Ronan really needs to think what is he going to answer back to him at this stage in the race. Now, Jen, you've already told us you're not a betting woman, but if you were, who would you like to be on at this stage of the race with one lap to go, four athletes all together? I, I, I think Rask will take the gold medal, and then I think it'll be fight for the silver and bronze. Such a difficult situation with four athletes coming to the finish line together. So Thorben Rusk from Denmark. He's had a very controlled race. There's been a lot going on around him. A lot of drama, a lot of a lot of intrigue. But there he is at the front. Look, Just he's picking it up again. Picking it again, he's not going to oh. let anyone get ahead of him. He's he's testing. He's testing. I, I suspect this is for the benefit of Hamish Lovemore. Well, now we're down to three. Yeah, Ronan has just dropped off. So we're down to the top three now. We've got Thorben Rass, Charlie Smith, and Hamish Lovemore. What a comeback from Hamish. Unbelievable. That unbelievable. He would, unbelievable that he would be now in the hunt for a medal after what happened to him. He'll be kicking himself if he can't get the gold. If he does get the gold, it will be one of the most incredible performances that we've seen. It will be. To be honest, I think at this stage of the race, after what he's done, I think he's just thinking, get me to that finish line and get a medal. But uh, Charlie Smith, what a race by him also. You know, I spoke about how he's such a great long distance paddler and he's really proved himself here today. He's also been a phenomenal paddler over K1000 meters. He was a finalist last year at senior level at the World Championships. So. He's got a great racing racing head also, and you know, he's so tactically aware. He trains in Nottingham Canoe Club. He's part of the Norm plan, coached and trained by Norman Mason, very famous paddler there. And you know, they've got a great club system, like in Silkeborg, like in South Africa. Um, they really have it down to the T, and you know, that's what's important. And to have fun and have great sessions every day with your friends and you know, push each other. And look at this, Thorben, I don't think he's going to give up his nope. his top spot. It's going to be a fight for silver and bronze, I think, between Charlie and Hamish. And it'd be first medals for the week for Great Britain and first medals for South Africa, I think, for the week. I don't think they've picked up a medal yet. So yeah. there are the support crew from Hamish. <laughs> They're still running alongside him. Gee, in your mind, and there's someone else has taken a swim, unfortunately. But now we're in the race. We are, this is the sprint. Will Hamish Lovemore drop a gear here. Has he got anything left to go? Charlie Smith doesn't look like he. Thorben Rusk, Thorben look at this. Rask. Look at this. He is he... going for that gold medal. Hamish Lovemore is spent. He's got nothing more. Charlie Smith chasing him down, trying to get to Thorben Rusk, but it's all in vain. Thorben Rusk has had control of this race for a couple of laps now, and he's now heading towards the gold medal. A fantastic performance from this Dane and a wonderful win. Charlie Smith, congratulations to you for the silver and an absolutely exhausted, exhausted Hamish Lovemore will cross over here for the bronze after really crawling his own chances by that crucial mistake. And there you have Jen, you talked about the friendship. Uh, look at them. They are very happy to have just got to the finish line. And there's your man Ronan Foley coming in in fourth yeah, spot. Yeah, and he's done a great race, you know, brilliant race here today, just that last lap. He, he dropped off the leading pack, but he can take a lot of positives from this race. And, you know, he has another year under 23. Uh, Hamish Lovemore, I'm sure it would be such a mix of emotions right now, wouldn't it, for oh, him? He's just... I think at this stage, he's got so happy that he was able to catch back up and get that medal. Like, that was phenomenal. I have to say, I really didn't think he was going to do it. Thorben put down, put down a big lead at that point in time and then um, he changed leads and then Hamish managed to get back up into that pack that front pack so well done to Hamish Lovemore I'm sure Lee and Hank are looking on thinking yes yes you made a silly mistake but you did do a great great pull back to that front group to claim a bronze medal for South Africa here at these world championships and the first medal for the South Africans first medal for the team GB as well 
Yeah, right. Charlie did a phenomenal race. And, you know, it's his last year under 23, so he's going to be extremely happy with that to finish his under 23 sprinting career with a bronze medal at the World Championships. And, you know, it's great to see these athletes being able to race 5,000 metres at the junior and under 23 World Championships. It just shows the interest that there is. You know, 35 competitors mm. on the line for the K1 men 5,000 metres under 23. It's, it bodes so well for the future, and hopefully the ICF will see how interested people are on this, and they'll continue to progress this event into the future. I'm sure they will. It's, uh, it's always a great spectacle uh, and a fantastic race there in the end. Uh, you mentioned this is Charlie Smith's last year. It's also Hamish Lovemore's last year, but Thorben has another year, I think, in under 23, so he'll get a chance to defend his world title next year. Uh, and wow, I don't know who could possibly knock him off on his form at the moment, but next year is a long way away. Yeah, and I'm sure Jonas, uh, the coach in Silkeborg, will be extremely happy with Torben winning the gold medal here today, along with Torben's father is here. You know, they're a big canoeing family, the Rasks. Um, his sister, Catherine Rask, is also a great athlete, and I'm sure she's celebrating at home her brother's gold medal. And there he is, coming in now. Uh, he's staying in the same hotel that um, that we're at, and he's just been so relaxed all week and, and looking like he's just enjoying himself being here. I think he just loves racing, you I know that? And you know, Denmark have such a depth of paddlers, especially in the long distance oh. races as well, like Mads, Brad, Pedersen, unbelievable athlete. And he's preparing at home now for the World Championships to, tr to, to try and defend his title. Um, he's had a phenomenal season already, European champion, short and long course. And here we have Torben Rask becoming under 23, the inaugural European, the inaugural world champion at under 23 um, level in the K1 5000 meters. And next year we're going, I think we're going to Denmark for the Marathon World Championships. Yes, that's Jen. correct. So, uh, yeah. wow, what a spectacle that will be for the home crowd there. They could well go out and try and sweep the board with uh, the depth of talent they have. But of course, there'll be a very determined Irish woman there trying to stop them. And now we can see, look at Emma Jorgensen, a double Olympic medalist there from Tokyo 2021, watching on, um, celebrating Denmark's gold medal here today. Yeah, the, and the, the South Africans have finished running now, so that's good. <laughs> they were running alongside oh, Hamish Lovemore. The passion, like, Just. It, you know, I'm sure they really inspired him to get back up to that league group. and. I will never, like I said, forget the atmosphere in Peter Maritzburg that time. It's just, it's electric and nothing can compare to having people on the banks uh, like cheering you on and being so enthusiastic and passionate and dancing and singing. So here's where the race was lost, unfortunately. He just was looking over his shoulder and he's looked back and all of a sudden he's realised he's on the wrong side of the boy mm. and he's had to back back. What, what, would that, what did that cost him? About 10 seconds, 20 seconds, I suppose? Oh, even more, so I let's think. Let's have a look yeah. here. Here he goes. He's all of a sudden realised, so now he's got to get back. And, yeah, that has cost him some valuable time there and the effort he had to make to try and get back up to that lead group. It was too much in the end because... Thorben, he was looking over, there he goes, Rusk was looking over his shoulder, he thought, okay, now I'll, I'll put a little bit of distance in here and, and make him work if he wants to get back in touch. And in the end, when we had that sprint at the end, normally you would expect, wouldn't you, Jen, that Hamish Lovemore would be able to go with Rusk and push him all the way to the line. Yeah, he is a great turn of speed, Hamish. Um, and, you know, if he had had more energy at the end, I think he probably would have gone for it. Who's to know what would have happened, but... Look, he has to be seriously, obviously he made a mistake, but to have that comeback that he did, yeah. it's it's unbelievable how he got back up to that league group. So it just shows the level of an athlete he is and the reserves he has for times of, for hard times throughout racing. Um, he can deal with those bad moments. And there's Charlie Smith being greeted by his mum and dad, very supportive family and very proud of Charlie here today. And I'm sure his girlfriend, Sam Rees-Clark, will be happy at home. And, there you go. That's my boy, he says. That's my boy. <laughs> yes, it is your boy. And uh, he is a world champion and uh, a very deserved world champion as well. Fantastic. The spread of medals continues on this final day of racing. Uh, the 5,000 metre races were 
billed as a, an exciting finale and they've lived up to their reputation. It's been a fantastic day of racing so far. As I mentioned, unfortunately, we, we can't bring you the, the stream of the, the juniors. We're very disappointed about that. Ladies and gentlemen, we have junior 5,000 meter.